I don't know. I, I think Ryung played it as best as he could. He saw that there was no way he was going to get back before he lost a lot of workers. Mm -hmm. So he went for the fight, and Classic just took a good fight. You know, I'll be honest with you. I think one thing Ryung could do to be a little bit better in these games is make sure he's eating a little bit healthy. He could try eating this great beef jerky by the Crave Jerky Company. It'll give him the strength he needs to win through some of these games. Anyways, we are going to be hopping into this game. Here on the bottom right-hand side, we have the player I think needs some of that Crave. It's the Blue Terran player, Ryong. And in the top left, spawning as the Red Protoss, he clearly has eaten enough Crave Jerky to grow a chin like that. It is classic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. He is the Chen Tong. He's an awesome guy. We've actually done an interview with him already, but I'd love to pick his brain about like what his thoughts on the the meta is today, because it's been a little bit under a year since that uh, that interview was uh, was filmed. But you guys can check that out. It was done by Toast of the Dank Shrine, as well as our friendly Seeker from Team Liquid. But uh, yeah, Felipe, if you will let the audience know where they can find that, I appreciate it so much, my friend. Anyways, we've got a pretty uh, pretty standard build out of both of these players, man. Is there anything uh, in particular you'd expect on this map, like out of the ordinary, or is this just going to be status quo? I mean, Abyssal Reef has kind of just become such a standard map because it's been around for so long that everyone's kind of used to it. I mean, you see Classic basically opening the same way he did last game, grabbing that Stargate. Ryung has gone back to a very standard opening. He's got that gas before his supply depot. He's got the fast factory. He's throwing down the starport, which means he will be well set to just kind of play the standard Terran game. So, do you think it's going to be an Oracle when the Stargate pops, or do you think a, the, the Phoenix is something we'll see? I think, I think we're about to find out, and I feel like if I make a prediction, it might not go too well. So you're going to stall out the timer, bastard. As I was saying, the Oracle is probably what he would go for. <laughs> I love that. I love that, man. So, Oracle, Revelation, play the play the standard macro game behind some Blink Stalkers or Adept with Glaives. Which is the uh, the better option, you think? I mean, you saw how well Glaives worked that last game, and this right. map is pretty similar with the Natural, where it's kind of defensible. But we do see Ryung mm -hmm. throwing down that Widow Mine and in a position to catch this Oracle. I love it when players do this. You put the Mine in a position where the Oracle will fly over it, and you kind of just hope that they don't notice that there's a Death Beam about to fly right over that Mine. Oh, he even catches the Oracle's path with that Reaper, so if he wants to move that Mine, he can. Dude, we've got Cyclones in production. Aren't Cyclones like every Protoss' nightmare? I... I've had bad dreams about Cyclones as a Protoss player. They just oh. mow down buildings so quickly, but their one downside is uh -huh. as the game goes on, they plummet in effectiveness. Agreed. Agreed. But uh, is it going to be enough to take Ryung out? Like, has got a build that this is, uh, like... Wow. Uh, has Ryung got enough to take Classic out, or Classic uh, you know, playing conservatively enough to, to, to be able to repel this? Well, I really like what Ryung's done here. He's actually just made a Viking, and he has the Cyclone 4 backup damage, so these Oracles are kind of shut down. It's a really nice adjustment from last game, where now he can kind of hunt down these Oracles, where yes, mm -hmm. they are faster than the Viking, but you have to keep moving them away from the Viking, and if the Viking is being pesky and constantly hunting down your units, and even a Cyclone driving mm -hmm. under this for the lock-on, like, this is just super good. Even a mind-blowing, wow, Ryung! Wow, he threw everything and the kitchen sink at that or Shutting down that Oracle, that's huge, man. That's most of his map control. He's still got one hole left, but there's a reason he goes for two. Yeah, I mean, like, that was really well done by him. And now a Liberator sneaking in to do some harassment. Yeah, it looks like it's going to sneak into the back mineral line in the main. Meanwhile, a great push here into the third base. It's going to pin most of these adepts to the stalkers. He's got to retreat into the stasis ward. It looks like Ryung going to get caught with the Marines, but retreating back a little bit with that Cyclone. The Liberator does go ahead and position itself, but the stasis ward has uh, completely immobilized this army. He's going to try and come in behind and go ahead and kill off. I believe that was a Viking, or was that a Cyclone? I believe it was a Cyclone, but I really like what Ryung's done here, like, with this Widow Mine, or rather, sorry, he's dodging the Widow Mine, like, mm -hmm. beautifully, like, he's dodging around it, and with that Stasis Ward, like, he's forcing Classic, or he's forcing Ryung to really not be able to commit to a fight, because if he commits to a fight, he's just gonna lose stuff with Warpins, but... Liberator did damage, Ryung is in a very even spot that didn't even go bad for him, he's got his mm -hmm. own third, 
about to be up and running whenever that command center does finish in like 50 years. But <laughs> I mean, honestly, so long for bases to build. Yeah, honestly, like that's not a bad fight. He didn't lose mm -hmm. too much. He lost like a mine and a cyclone and some marines, which are free anyway. So no big deal. Five gateways in production now for Classic. I think he's going to uh, to start uh, trying to push out with mostly a gateway army. Think we'll see any Robo stuff anytime soon? Yeah, it should be thrown down pretty soon whenever he gets the money. But right now, just getting those gateways out, just getting plus one armor to go along with his plus one attack and his blades. Like we're seeing a very similar strategy from Classic. Just minus, just minus one Oracle. Minus one Oracle. All right. So. Got Stimpak about halfway done. He's got the plus one infantry. He's got combat shield. And Medivacs are starting to produce as well, my friend. I think Ryong's getting into a more comfortable position, but I still think he's uh, he's got an uphill battle here, man. It's uh, currently 1-0 Classic's lead. And uh, what would your thoughts be in uh, Classic's position? Just, you know, st stay true to the strategy that's worked? Yeah, I mean, it worked for him just fine, but one thing that mm -hmm. Ryung has done is you can see how much he's learned from this series. He caught out the probe that built the proxy pylons, and now he's kind of looking around for the pylon as well as getting a push out. And he's at shading across the map, going to find nothing friendly. Yep, and here we go. We've got a nice revelation here on that army. It looks like Ryung I'm going to choose to go ahead and get back Marauder. Uh, Marauders are actually a unit that... I've heard a lot of Protoss complain about, like, I don't see that many unless, like, I go super heavy Baneling style as a Zerg, but what role do they play, really, in, in like, Terran vs. Protoss? Well, they serve a couple of roles. A, they do a great job of All killing... that thought, sniping off those Widow Mines and getting great uh, kills with those Adepts. Looks like the Adepts are going to try and get out of the battle with the Marine Army. You're going to pull that army away as he... Well, he does not shade in. Looks like he's going to choose to lose a lot of the adepts, but we've got him attack here up the ramp. He's going to knock down the destructible debris so he can get a better concave on his army. But Classic's got a lot of stalkers there, Camaro, and more are warping in. Meanwhile, we've got Liberators in production at home for Ryung, and it looks like that should be enough to go ahead and knock back the army at his base. Yeah, we're really seeing Ryung adjust a lot to that first game. I mean, one thing again is Ryung's been playing for seven years. So, like, if nothing else, in a big seven or seven game series, like, his adjustments, mm -hmm. like, it's really important to adjust. You have to adjust, and if you don't, like, I mean, he would have probably lost this game. But you see, he's in such a good position. He took no damage from that original add up, from that add up push. Like, he's in mm -hmm. such a good spot, and now he's just pushing in. Yeah, he's got a great concave here. He's going to four class through this choke point. A lot of those stalkers unable to attack, and it like, uh, a lot of the army actually bleeding out for Classic. Classic on the low ground, however, so cutting off Ryung's possible retreat point, actually taking the high ground advantage, going to force the Stalkers to blink right into his own reinforcements, and that is going to be it for most of Classic's army, but Ryung going to have to pick up as these reinforcements swinging in. Adepts definitely going to be able to kill off the bio. He's got to get to his own reinforcements. Those two Liberators finally coming into play. He's got to be careful not to throw those away against Classic's or remaining Stalkers. We've seen him do that a couple of times already. And he is getting those Liberators zoned up. Camera, nice kiting here by Classic, but it's just not going to be enough. Uh, the Shade Out, great choice there. Yeah, this is kind of an awkward situation here for Classic. He's really got to warp in Stalkers and Adepts, and you can't really do both. Yeah, exactly, man. Liberator Zone's uh, going down again. Stalkers very careful to blink out of that, but Classic knows that is it. Ryung going to be tying this up 1-1. One, one. I love what you said earlier about Ryung being able to adapt. I think that plays to what I had spoke about in the intro, where Ryung, like, you have to back him into a corner for him to come out. Maybe that's where what I was trying to say is that he's got the ability to read his opponent over successive games, and the longer a series goes, the better off for Ryung. Yeah, I mean, that's always one of the big advantages you see, even in, like, fighting game players, like Daigo Umahara, like, all these old school players that have just been right. playing for so long. Like, you may win the first couple of games, but you saw Ryung literally adjusted. Classic did a very similar build. Ryung went for a more standard build. Mm -hmm. He got some more Cyclones early to really keep the pressure on. He denied the Oracle completely in really just a great chase down with everything he had. Like you saw, he chased it with the Marines. He chased it with the Viking. He chased it with the Cyclone and used the Cyclone to chase it into the Widow Mine to take that out. But like, just doing a great job with that. 
If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.